In this class, we are going to learn how to put or upload any object to object storage in Oracle Cloud with the help of integration built with Oracle Integration 3. In order to begin with the hands-on that is creating integration, first of all we have to make sure we have already created a object storage bucket. So for that we have to go to this navigation menu, click on the storage and click on object storage. We have to select the appropriate compartment where we have to create the bucket or we have to just make sure where our bucket is if already a bucket has been created for your integration purpose. I have already created this bucket. Suppose if you want to create a bucket, click on this create bucket and give the name and you can select archive and standard tier for this standard will be little more charged by Oracle Cloud archive is a little cheaper and also you can have this emit object events like suppose if you create any object or download any object or update any object it will emit an event and you can subscribe to those events we have already covered those things in our classes earlier so we are not going to touch upon the events concept in this class also we can move the object from one tier to another like the standard to archive if you want to save some cost also you can have the versioning concept for the objects this is not the objective of this class just we have to make a bucket and we have to just click on create and it will create a bucket for you make sure you create the bucket in the right compartment where you have access to i have already created this bucket that is demo one wherein we will be uploading our objects currently i don't have any objects uploaded one of the things what you can make use is pre-authenticated request over here we don't have any objects as of now. If there is an object, we can make use of this pre-authenticated request and you can share that URL generated with someone. By making use of the pre-authenticated request, they will be able to download the object. So we will touch upon this in the next class. So in the objects, we don't have anything. Suppose if you want to manually upload any object, just click on this object and you can select the files from your computer and it can click on upload and it will upload it. But here, as we are making use of the integration, we have to look for the REST APIs which we can leverage in order to achieve our use case. Here is the REST API for the object storage. I am here in the official documentation page by Oracle on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure that is for API references and the endpoints. From the table of content, we have to go to object storage service API. Under that, we have to go for object. Under that, we have to go for the put object. Here, the HTTP method is put and this is the URL we have to use. Coming to the base URL, click on this object. Sorry, we have to click on this object storage API home over here and select the URL that is the base URL appropriate for your tenancy or the region wherever you have created your object storage or the bucket. Currently, I have created this in the Ashburn region. If you see over here on the right top corner, my home region is US East. Under that, we are having a compartment learning 236. So I have to search for the Ashburn region. It's over here. So I will be making use of this as the base URL. You can select your appropriate URL from this page that is object storage service API home. Under that we have to go for the object and the put object. Here the HTTP method is put and this is the relative URI. Basically we have to provide the namespace, bucket name and the object name. Object name is the name of the file which we are uploading. Bucket name in our case it is the demo one. As you see it is the demo one is our bucket. And namespace you will get from here. This is our namespace. So those things we have to populate. Coming to the request and the response, here content length is required, it is S and rest of the things are not required in the header but namespace all those things which are part of the path parameter as required. You can have a look at this in detail in order to make use of this API to upload an object. Coming to the sample here, there is a SDK provided for the respective languages. For our focus of interest is the REST API. Here the input method is the binary file and this is the sample shown by Oracle. And the response is just the status, we won't get anything. Now with this note, we will go to the integration instance. I have already created an integration. First of all, I will test this integration. Then I will walk you through the code as well as the connection, how I have configured the connection. Let me just run this integration. This integration I have built as a scheduled integration. What it will basically do is it will pull through the FTP directory. This is my directory where I have placed the notes.txt file. If I open the file, This is the content it is having hello have a nice day so you can have any kind of file over here not only the text pdf image video anything as per your convenience or the use case you can have so this integration what it will do is when i click on run it will pull to the directory that is project slash inbound and check how many files are there and it will upload one by one all the files i will click on run currently i don't have any objects over here if you i refresh no objects are there i have clicked on run it will iterate over every file we have only one file currently so we are seeing only one iteration so it will pick that file download the file and what it will do is it will upload the file to object storage let me just refresh your processing has been completed expand this 
here if you see invoke put object is successful now let me just refresh yeah our file got uploaded successfully now if i check the content of this click on this and click on download let me open this the same file we have uploaded like hello have a nice day now let's walk through the integration before going ahead with integration we need to have one connection created in order to talk to object storage let me edit this in the base url i have provided the base url of my object storage as per my region so what i have shown over here under object storage home api i have provided the base url for ashburn region as i am making use of my oracle cloud in us east region that is the ashburn region so that url i have provided over here which is the base url coming to the rest of the url that is this one we will configure in our integration when we drag and drop this connection in our integration canvas coming to the ci signature one we have to provide the tenancy id user id private key and the fingerprint we, in detail we had seen how to generate these things at the end of the video i will put a short clip or the recap or the highlight of that earlier class wherein we had generated the api signing keys as well as the auth token so these things you have to provide and click on test and save that's it with this connection now let's walk through this integration object storage file upload as i told this integration is a scheduled integration and the first operation over here is the list file I am making use of the FTP connection over here in order to list all the files in this particular directory that is project slash inbound. Once we get the list of all the files, we are iterating over the list of files one by one and again I am making use of the FTP connection over here that is with the operation download file. So with the help of list file, we will be getting the details of name of the file and the directory and we will pass that to this FTP connection in the request mapper and we will download that file to the integration virtual directory. And this file once downloaded we will upload to object storage with the help of connection which we have created which I have shown just now that is OCI object storage connection. Let me just show you in the edit mode. Here the rest of the relative URI what I have shown over here we have provided in this configuration wizard. And the HTTP action is put what it is shown over here is the same thing. Then I have check mark we want to send the headers request and the response as well. Click on next here it is showing we are having three path parameters like here what you see the namespace bucket and the object are the path parameters click on continue next it is asking for the input request it's a binary octet stream i'm selecting as we are uploading the file click on continue in the request header i'm selecting content length and the content type as the http headers we need to pass to this invocation suppose if you look at this documentation content length is important so content type i have added but i'm not using this content type at runtime it will resolve automatically Click on next and in the response I am selecting the binary octet stream but we don't have any response here apart from the status if you look at the response the status is just the 200. So that's it with this configuration at high level this is the relative URI this is the HTTP method so query parameter I have just created I am not using but we, there is this headers we need to use content length and the content type request type is application octet stream as we are sending the binary file that's it with this connection let me just show the mapper. In the HTTP header, I am sending the content length. Suppose if you ask me how I know the content length. So when we download the file with the help of this FTP connection, in the properties for every file, we will be getting the size that I am mapping over here. Coming to the template parameter namespace, bucket name, object name. Object name is the file name of the file which we want to upload. Bucket name in our case, it's a demo one. So this is the bucket in which our object will be going. And the namespace is this name that is what you see over here. So that's it we have to map and coming to the file we have to map the reference like this. So that's it with this integration. With the help of this integration and with the help of this REST API or the connection we will be able to upload an object to object storage with the help of integration built with Oracle integration 3. In this class we will learn how to generate the API signing key. So this is just a documentation what is mentioned by Oracle but we will show practically how to do the same. This is just for your reference purpose suppose if you stuck anywhere just use this for your reference. So first thing is we have to generate the API key. In order to generate the API key click on this icon on the right top corner click on my profile. Here you can see what is the username and all what you have used in order to log in. Now you have to click this API key under resources click on add API key. First of all you have to download the private key and the public key. I have downloaded both the keys to my computer. Once I have downloaded all the keys we have to click on add. Once you click on add it will generate something configuration details we have to copy and save somewhere safely in our computer just for reference purpose. I will tell you where this will be used. 
Now open the notepad. I have pasted this configuration details over here under the default I have pasted whatever is over here like the configuration file preview. So we have to create the configuration file in our local computer with all those details. So for that purpose we need those details. Now the fingerprint whatever is shown we have to copy and paste it somewhere like this. So once this is done click on close. Next is we have to go to the auth token. We have to generate a token over here. I will tell this is the token. So this token is a password or the passphrase which we will use in order to log in into the docker. So I will tell you when this will be used just copy this. So you have to copy this and save safely and you shouldn't have access to this saved information to anyone apart from you because this is a sensitive information with the help of which anybody can log in into your docker container and they can manage your functions. I have copy pasted the authentication code as well as the API key details in some notepad. So this is the first thing what you have to do. Once done click on close. Oh, 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 oh,